The most significant change is that to atypical employment. Atypical employment is employment that deals with employees who are not full-time permanent employees, or particularly employees employed on a temporary basis or on a fixed-term contract or through labour brokers. And the amendments are designed to try and protect those groups of employees who are perceived as being vulnerable. The, the purpose is to try and provide them with the same benefits that employees who are permanent employees receive and to provide them with the same protection that the Labour Relations Act provides permanent employees in the case of unfair dismissals and unfair labour practice. Well, from an employee's point of view, it will be interesting to see the effect it has on employment generally because a large portion of employees are employed through labour brokers. The effects of the amendments will probably result in an increased cost to the employment of employees because the labour brokers who previously were able to provide labour to clients who would now have to become the employer at a cheaper rate may not be able to do that anymore because the cost of employing those employees by the labour broker will now be similar to the cost that the client would employ them at. So there may be a reduction in the amount of um, employment but at the same time for the employees who are able to remain employed there should be a, a rise in, in the benefits they receive that they should um, receive similar benefits in the form of things such as retirement funding and medical aids, which some employees, because they're employed on fixed term contracts or because they're employed through labour brokers, are currently not entitled to receive. I think the labour unions will be very happy. This is something that they have been campaigning for. It has not been quite what they wanted. They wanted a complete ban of labour brokers, but you will see that I think that they will be very happy with what they have and there will be a significant drive to saying to employers you must now employ people on a full-time permanent basis and they will look very critically at the exceptions that exist. The, the, because they haven't banned labor, the use of labour brokers or the use of fixed term employees completely, there are still exceptions when you're allowed to use them. I think the unions will be very vigorous in looking at those exceptions and challenging employers when they believe the employers are flouting those exceptions. Fask and Martin, our partner, Paul Fokier, tells us more about the changes in the new minimum wage and simplifying dismissal procedures. There seems to be um, a strong momentum towards a minimum wage at this stage um, and a fairly uh, big likelihood that we will have a minimum wage eventually. But of course it's very hard to decide where to pitch the minimum wage. Um, it could have a major effect if it is too high. There are what one could call vulnerable categories of um, employees. You think about domestic workers, for example. Well, if you have a minimum wage, you properly, you have to apply it to all sectors of the economy. Um, and if you simply pitch that too high, you will exclude um, certain sectors. Employers would simply be very hesitant to employ. So therein lies your danger. The counter debate is a living wage, a meaningful existence if you are making your productive capacity available to an employer. That's the counter debate. And where it lies, it's very hard to say. If you look at what the minimums are in terms of bargaining councils and so forth, you probably have a debate of around 2,000 rand. Um, but that is not what the trade unions would be um, happy with. So there's still a lot of debate to be had um, about the minimum wage going forward. Looking at dismissals create all sorts of opportunities. If you look from an employer's perspective, employers have been saying for a long time that um, it's very expensive. Uh, you have to have quite a bit of resources to get the procedure right to fairly dismiss someone, um, then even if you do get it right, you go to arbitration, you still stand the chance of losing the arbitration, incurring further costs. So employer's argument has been that um, makes me hesitant to employ in this, this environment. Um, employees obviously say I have a right to, to be fairly treated when I'm going to lose um, my job. Um, and the two areas where I think there is fertile ground for some debate around this is if you are going to have uh, a debate about a minimum wage, um, wouldn't it be fair to have a debate about productivity? Um, and is the quid pro quo not um, then maybe um, to say it should be easier 
uh, or more cost effective to be able to dismiss employees who are not productive. So in the area of poor performance, there may be some grounds for a trade-off. Um, another area of debate could be if uh, you do give employers an easier or a less cumbersome procedure to deal with, uh, maybe the quid pro quo is that employers must pay a larger sum towards notice pay or severance pay in certain circumstances um, as a quid pro quo for, for not having the onerous procedures. So there is, there is fertile grounds and ideas to have the debate um, and if one can get it right, it could help towards uh, dealing with unemployment.